As a borough form of government, Madison, New Jersey was incorporated by a group of former Chatham Township villagers on Christmas Eve, 1889, ostensibly so that the separate borough could have their own water and electric supply. The construction of these utilities, as well as a rudimentary telephone service, was made possible in no small part by the financial wherewithal and leadership of James Augustus Webb, a wealthy industrialist originally from New York. Sadly, James and Margarita Baker Webb lost their only son, James Jr., in 1887. To memorialize his life, James Webb hired famed architect Josiah H. Cady, who designed New York City's Metropolitan Opera House and Natural History Museum to build a memorial chapel in their son's name. The building was donated to the Presbyterian Church and later connected to the 1928 Parish Hall, where it still stands today. Earlier in his life, James Webb helped establish what is now known as the Madison Area YMCA in 1873. In 1908, he donated 20% of the cost of building a new YMCA on Main Street, across from the James Public Library, which was donated by Ellen Stebbins James and her husband D. Willis James in 1899. After the library moved to Keep Street in 1969, the building became the new home of early trades and crafts. Across the street from the library, Willis James constructed his business building and civic hall to generate revenue to help compensate James for the beautiful church-like stained glass windows and unusual architecture of the new library building. By December 1915, Madison had finished elevating the railroad tracks, eliminating the need for road crossing gates. A new stone and brick railroad station was finished by 1916 and donated to the borough by Marcellus Hartley Dodge Sr. of Phelps Dodge fame and his wife Ethel Geraldine Rockefeller Dodge, local residents. Sadly, their only child, a son named Marcellus Hartley Dodge Jr., died in a European car wreck in 1930. In his memory, his mother Geraldine built and donated the Hartley Dodge Memorial Building to be used as the borough hall costing today's equivalent of more than $10 million. It was dedicated in 1935. James Webb also had a hand in building one of the earliest golf clubs in the country, Madison Golf Club when he donated the land and provided funds for the clubhouse, completed in 1903. American children are taught that Boston is the cradle of the American Revolution. However, Washington and his troops spent two winters encamped in, in the Marstown area, first in the Lawanica Valley starting in January 1777 and later during the brutal winter of 1779-1780 in Marstown's Jockey Hollow, a short way up the road from Madison. There are two historic buildings on Ridgedale Avenue both dating to the Revolutionary War and both said to have been visited by General Washington himself. The Sayre House, also known as the General Wayne House, was built in about 1745 and was used by General Anthony Wayne as his headquarters in 1777. The Reverend James Caldwell of Springfield Battle fame was a frequent visitor. On the same street a short walk up the road is the 1730 Luke Miller House and Workshed, virtually unchanged over the last 285 years, and now like the Sayre House, privately owned. It is said that General Washington had his horse shod at Miller Station. In 1839, the Catholic Church was built on Ridgedale Avenue as a permanent place of worship. 
Before this construction, the growing Catholic congregation of mostly Italian and Irish background had been forced to meet in various locations around the borough, including in the Presbyterian Meeting House, then located at the top of the hill in the Presbyterian Cemetery on Main Street, a building which was torn down many years ago. The local Presbyterian congregation had decided to build a larger place of worship in the early 1800s. However, an argument ensued between the Bottle Hill constituency and the Chatham Village worshipers to the east as to the placement of the future church building. The Chatham group eventually broke away to build their own church closer to their village, and in 1825 the new Presbyterian church was completed across the street and slightly east of the Presbyterian Cemetery. In 1905, the Catholic Church built a new structure on Green Village Road, up the hill from the village center, leaving the old building on Ridgedale to be purchased by John V. Corbett, the building contractor of the new St. Vincent's Church building. The original Presbyterian Chapel now serves as a Masonic Lodge. While the congregation now worships in their 1954 constructed church building with its prominent steeple forever occupying the Madison skyline. In 1854, a group of Episcopalian worshipers spun off from St. Peter's Church in Marstown, at first holding services in the Odd Fellows Hall on Waverly Place. By September of 1855, they had completed the construction of their new church on Madison Avenue, where it remains today. Around the turn of the last century, and after the area became known as a major rose-growing capital, many wealthy New Yorkers began to take notice of Madison's fresh air and beautiful sweeping hillsides, as well as easy train access, and multiple mansions began appearing along Madison Avenue all the way up to Marstown. Although most have been torn down, the ones that remain have been repurposed for other uses. There is much history to be told on each and every building. On this site sat the former estate named Cecilhurst, an elaborate sprawling mansion built by Adolf de Barry and which burned to the ground in 1912. By 1921, Leyland H. Ross had purchased the property and built his own mansion on the site and called it Parland a derivation of his name and that of his first wife, Parthenia Burke. After several scandalous years of marriage, they divorced in 1928, with Parthenia Burke Ross remaining in the house. She remarried to Paul C. Dowing, who died two years later, after which she married George Herbert Walker, great uncle of George Herbert Walker Bush, our 41st president. The estate was eventually purchased by the Diocese of Patterson, who turned it into the private Catholic school, Bailey Ellard, which closed in 2005. In its latest identity is now St. Paul Inside the Walls, a Catholic evangelical group, and its fields are owned by the borough of Madison. The mansion is surrounded by a rare pudding stone wall, as seen from Madison Avenue. Farther west and just over the town line lies the former Florence and Hamilton Twombly estate, directly tied by namesake and land donation to the town of Florham Park. In the mid-1800s, a gentleman by the name of Hamilton Twombly was working as a financial advisor to William Henry Vanderbilt, president of the New York Central Railroad and son of Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt. In 1877, he married Florence Adele Vanderbilt, the boss's daughter, and together they built the 100-room Florham Mansion on 1,200 acres in 1897. The name is a derivation of their two first names. During its heyday, the Twombly estate cost, in today's dollars, over $6 million a year to maintain. However, it's been estimated that the family investments pulled in the equivalent of over $150,000 a day, even during the Depression. In 1955, the couple's last surviving daughter sold the house's contents at public auction, and two years later, Esso, later known as Exxon, bought most of the grounds while Fairleigh Dickinson bought the mansion and 187 acres of land 
for their Florham campus. Speaking of repurposing buildings, the original Madison High School was built on Central Avenue in 1910. By 1925, the high school had been moved to Main Street, across from the Presbyterian Cemetery. Due to Madison's growing population, a new high school was built on Ridgedale Avenue on the remnants of the Twombly Estate. It opened in 1958 and remains in the same location to this day. The original high school building is now Central Avenue School, one of three elementary schools in the borough. The Main Street building now serves as the junior school for grades six, seven, and eight. In 